Hello and welcome back to another video about materials that may or may not be around five minutes long. Today we're going to be talking about the WPO or World Position Offset Disable Distance Option. So, jumping straight in, I have a forest of beautiful Australian gum trees. Uh, and as you can see, it is, you know, it's sizable. As you may also notice, the trees all the way in the distance, all the way at the very back over there, are still computing their world position offset, you know, trees swaying, leaves blowing, animation. Uh, even though, you know, realistically, no one's going to freaking notice that they're moving or not. So, what can we do about this? Because obviously, world position offset is calculated per vertex. So, you know, for every single one of these leaf cards and you know, tree trunk verts and all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, they're all going through quite a hefty calculation for very little gain. So one thing that we could do naively is get the world position of the vertex, get the camera position, and we're going to get the distance between them. Then we're going to just apply an offset. This is kind of like a you know, a grace period distance from the camera. Then we're going to divide it by a number. Uh, this is going to give us the length of the gradient from effect on to effect off. We're going to saturate that one minus it. And then we're going to multiply all of our world position offset by whatever the result is here. Uh, we can also just, you know, visualize, uh, visualize visually whether the effect is on or off by plugging it into the base color. Okay, so you can see now that our trees at the front are white, titanium white, and they're moving very, you know, very goodily, uh, but the trees all the way at the back, they are completely still. They are just not doing much at all. And obviously as we move our camera around, we are going to, you know, some of these are gonna start springing to life as we move through and you're probably not even going to notice this as a player you know if you're like moving through this forest you're not really going to notice aside from my really shittily done LODs popping in so you might be thinking oh the problem solved like you know we've disabled world position offset from all of the the trees off in the distance but you are wrong you could never be more wrong and that is because the world position offset is still being computed for these ones all the way in the back. And that is because all of the world position offset stuff is still being computed. And then at the very end, we're just saying, oh, actually, let's multiply that by zero. So all of the calculations still gets done, but then we just kind of throw it in the bin at the end, which doesn't actually save any performance. It doesn't save any vertex instructions what we want to do ideally is to almost pre-compute a different version of our shader that just doesn't have anything going into the well position offset and we want to swap them out at a distance or alternatively just disable the well position offset from being calculated in the first place uh, for a given you know instance a given mesh at a given distance uh, and luckily for us unreal actually has that implemented for us so i'm quickly just going to uncap my frame rate and we're going to go stat uh, fps i guess and you can see that i need to put down more trees because my computer is simply too powerful so let's just like let's really Fuck this shit up. Let's just... All right, now, now we're chugging. Oh, ha okay. Maybe that's not, maybe that's a bit too much. You can see, you know, we're sitting at about 30 FPS. Then if we apply our super, you know, really smart, really well thought out camera distance mask, you can see that our FPS is literally the same. Uh, so let's go back and we'll just switch this to, you know, having them all animated. B 
because, you know, it's not actually saving us any performance at all. We're going to go back to our foliage tool that I painted all these with, and I'm just going to select all my trees. And we are going to scroll down to the instance settings. We're going to go to the advanced section. And there is now an option as of Unreal 5 point something. Uh, world position offset disable distance. So let's just go ahead and set this to 20,000. And you can see that all of the, you know, all of the ones over here, they're just simply not moving now. Um, there's no fade out. There's no, you know, nothing fancy like that. But you can see now in that same position, we've gained back 10 frames, which at, you know, 30 frames a second is 33% of our performance of our GPU compute time. So by actually disabling well position offset from being computed in the first place, we can actually save a lot of instructions rather than just visually turning it off. Now, you'll probably be thinking, this looks super dumb because now we just have these trees that as we get closer to them, they're just going to like pop into their well position offset. And it just looks really stupid. Now, I believe that this distance is based on their, uh, like the actual location of the instance, meaning that the, the pop in is happening when the pivot point is 20,000 units away from the camera. So we can actually use that to our advantage by going back to our shader. And we're actually going to use this, which funnily enough, I have 5,000 units with a fall off gradient of 15,000 equals 20,000. But instead of doing it per vertex, we're actually going to get the object pivot point. And we're going to use the mesh particle pivot location. We're going to use that distance between that and the camera to, you know, turn our effect on and off. So if we are all the way back here, the world position offset is completely disabled. But then if we move to here, the world position offset becomes enabled again, but it's being multiplied by something very close to zero. That's why you can see that this tree is like very slightly moving. Then as we move closer, it gets multiplied by a higher and higher value until it reaches multiplied by one. And so we essentially cancel that pop in and pop out by, you know, smoothing it over some distance before the world position offset gets disabled. Now, this doesn't just apply to instance foliage and stuff. You can actually apply this to static meshes. Go to the static mesh component and search up, uh, you know, disable, and then there will be a world position offset disable. So the last thing to keep in mind with this, you know, the slow disabling of the world position offset before we turn it off completely, is that this has to be at least less than the number that you set, uh, you know, on the instance. So the world position offset disable distance, we set to 20,000, so, we're giving it a, you know, a bias of 5,000. Then over the next 15,000 units, we fade it out to zero and then it gets turned off. If the total number is greater than the fade out distance, then you'll still get a bit of a pop. So one of the annoying things is that you can't just access the, you know, the distance number in the shader like you can with the per instance uh, fade amount node which if you are using the foliage tool and you know i go to this one um there is the culling distance which we can set at you know 10,000 units away and then 20,000 units away and we can set that per individual foliage piece and then in the shader we can access that zero to one gradient usually you would use this to like do a dithered mask to fade the foliage out before it just pops out of existence, it gets culled. So there isn't anything like this for the well position offset disable distance. So you have to do it manually. You can parameterize it 
and then you know per material we could say okay well the the gum trees i want to fade out i want to give them you know five thousand units of of grace and then a fifteen thousand unit fade out but then for something like a little shrub I want it to be like, okay, maybe up to like a thousand units away and then just give it like a 3000 unit. So you do have to kind of keep track of what the, the disabled distance is per, you know, piece of foliage or per material. You can't just access it easily in here. Maybe that will change in the future, but for now you have to manually keep track of the well position offset disabled distance. Now, some people out there are absolute sickos and they like to use bone-driven foliage. I'm just using a character as an example here because I don't have any, you know, skinned foliage because I'm not a psychopath. But if we go to the material, there's a little trick that we can use, which is getting the pre-skinned local position. So if you, if you get local position, you can see over here, there is a local origin pre-skinned instance. Um, if you want to learn more about that, check out my pre-skinned nodes video. But if we get the pre-skinned position, meaning our, you know, our scaly mesh before the animation and subtract the current position of the verts, you know, with the animation applied, we then get an offset, well position offset, that puts it back at its default position. So back to A pose. Uh, or in the case of a tree that has some, you know, crazy bone based movement, it will just put it back to being, you know, a regular ass tree. And by using distance blend, which is just a function that pretty much does the same thing as we made before, we can just multiply the offset to zero to enable the animation, or we can apply this when you know this is at at one and that will then zero out the animation so if we have a look we've got a character they're running around you can imagine this is a tree swaying maybe it's like physically simulated or something and then as i move further away it will lerp towards its a pose but that's just something else to keep in mind so that if you've got bone based you know animation of any sort that you need to kind of gradually disable in the shader before you you know turn it off at the actual animation level um, that's just something that you can do so that is the well position offset disable distance option in unreal engine why it is important is that if we're just hiding calculations done in a shader they're still being computed and then being discarded at the last minute because shaders are for the most part, stateless. You know, shaders don't branch in the way that CPU logic does, where you can have an if question and it will actually execute, you know, one side of the branch and completely ignore the other. A shader will compute everything that you give it and, you know, then give you the output. I hope that you learned something new. Hopefully this saves you some frames on the GPU side of things in your project. And if you did learn something new today, you are obliged to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you want to stay updated with everything Prismatica and Prismatica Dev and tutorials and Unreal Engine and all that kind of stuff. If you do want to support monetarily, you can do so for as little as $1 per month in the description of the video uh, by joining the Patreon. And if you do have any questions that you want to ask me, I am live on Twitch a lot. Uh, and also on YouTube lately. So feel free to pop in, ask some questions. I can do like a little live demo if you're lucky. And I hope that you have a great day. So with that, we say goodbye. Goodbye.